This documentary, we bring to you exclusive footage from the Skoan archives, where witnesses and survivors give their accounts of what happened September 12, 2014. I want to salute the martyrs, our people that are so faithful to God, the God generous people that know the God they are serving. I want to salute them. They was all over the world. I want to say thank you. I salute your faith. The message I have for you, I will read it page by page so that you can be able to write it down. Thank you. Let me first of all say thanks to the following organization and their support. First, the state we are today, Lagos State, and the federal government of Nigeria, thank you very much for your support and your prayer. And there's the security agencies of different bodies. You know, I will not be able to mention you one by one. We have many security agencies around. I want to salute you and also to thank you very much for your love and your prayer and your support. Let me also remember engineers and the humanitarian group with their equipment. For some days now, I want to say thank you once again for your support. Rescue from different bodies. You just see people from everywhere. Let me remember the doctors. What wonderful people. All over, all over. Not even Nigeria alone. All over, doctors everywhere. And their hospital too. Media. Well, I want to say thank you, media. Because I know the relationship of Jesus Christ with media in the Bible. Yes. The Manor TV is the media of synagogue. If we fight media, we are fighting Manor TV. So we want to salute you. Thank you very much. Members and partners all over the world. A big thanks. I'm giving you a hug. Thank you for your prayer and all. Neighbors, thank you very much for your support and your prayer. Clergy and Christians all over the world, I want to say a very big thanks and I salute your faith. Let me remember diplomatic missions all over the world. We received letters from nearly all embassies praying and supporting us in prayer and I say, what can they do? I want to say thank you, diplomatic mission all over the world. Thank you very much. I want to use this opportunity to thank you. There are many organizations I will not be able to mention. If there is any organization, I'm not mentioned here. I want to say thank you for your prayer and for your love. Yes, I want to start my message here. I will just give you a detail because the security agencies need to do their job. In a nutshell, let me start from the very day. That was Friday morning. I was in the mountain. I left there at exactly 8 a.m. in the morning. And I received a phone call immediately where I left. I received a phone call immediately I got here. Just 10 minutes interval. When I was in the church, there was a jet ovary moving around, a very close rain at the mountain, which I had just left. The place I left at the mountain, I received a phone call that there is a jet moving around that spot where I told them that I was in the church. Before I knew it, I received a phone call again that there was a jet here, the same jet here, at the church, hovering around a building, passing over the building four times at a very low rate before the building collapsed. So we are going to show you the video because the CCTV covered it. September 12, 
2014, a building at the Synagogue Church of All Nations collapses after a strange aircraft flies low multiple times over it before disappearing. Scan visitors capture the strange aircraft on their cameras at the entrance of the building. A Scan visitor's photo. A strange aircraft flies low over a building at the Synagogue Church of All Nations. This is the enlarged view of the photograph taken. It reveals the close proximity at which the strange aircraft flew over the building shortly before its collapse. Let us listen to the visitors who took the photo, saw the aircraft, and survived September 12, 2014. Uh, my name is Shadrach Manzin. I'm from South Africa. So uh, we arrived here on the 11th. After the service at the main uh, church, we went uh, out for lunch. When we, uh, I was entering the, the other part of the church, I wanted to take some pictures of the synagogue uh, building pictures. And I took two pictures from there. While, while I was taking the last picture is when I discovered a very big giant aircraft. <laughs> it's something which it was unusual, actually, the way it looks. It was not looking like a passenger flight or an ordinary flight. So I asked myself, oh, what's OK? I thought maybe because the airport is too close and then the, the aircraft is going to land. Because my worry it was, yeah, it was too low low from the building. So in South Africa, normally that kind of the planes, such big aircraft, they don't just fly close to the buildings. So I just told myself that because the airport is too close, so the flight is trying to maybe to go and land. There's a certain lady that came in on inside the canteen shouting and screaming, crying that the, the building collapsed. It's, yeah. So it's then when we went outside to see it's when we saw the building uh, collapsed. I zoomed the picture where I saw the aircraft clearly on the picture. This is a photograph taken by Mr. Shadrach on his cell phone. A look at the upper left-hand corner reveals the strange aircraft as it flew over the building. By the time the incident happened, there was a lot of talks on it. Until when the man of God revealed what really happened is when I went back to my photo, all the photos I took. My name is uh, Toby Lebago. I'm coming from South Africa. When I entered the, the, the building, I heard the aircraft and I did not care about it. I went inside uh, the dining hall because it was lunchtime. Uh, uh, on the queue, I was served and uh, whilst I was uh, 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 preparing coffee for myself, uh, I heard a big sound behind me. Uh, it, 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 it was a uh, something like like a like a big bang you see so when i looked up i saw the 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 the, the, the slab is falling down and because of my experiences you see because i'm a health and safety officer and i've been trained on what to do when a beam is falling on top of you that you have to go to the opposite direction and then I ran to the opposite direction, I, and as I was running through the opposite direction, I saw the walls that they were cracking all over there. And suddenly I was on the floor, and it was dark, you see, as if it was not during the day. And it was very, very hot, and it was dark on the inside. But in some cases, you could feel that there was fresh air coming. You do not know where this fresh air is coming from. We pray to God and thank God and thank a, a, a Prophet T.B. Joshua for praying for us. My name is Mick Milambo. I'm from South Africa, originally from DRC. I was walking with my friend is Joseph, but he's not here. He went back in, the, in, the, in South Africa today. The time we walk, we just crossed the the gate here, we saw that uh, aircraft, it was just past here. Just slowly, slowly, big aircraft. That's my friend that told me, hey, if you see the craft like this one, is, that is trouble. Mm, the sand was not that big, it was small. And it was big aircraft, very big, but it was passing just uh, not far, but uh, slowly. 
And after that, we just go into that same building, that one, the aircraft passed there. Is that the same building, that one we was going? Our lunch we were supposed to take with the, after that, they start even saving the lunch. We manage even to get our lunch. And uh, I can say about after 10 minutes, I get, I hear just the sound, something like, puff, you know, like glass, when they break the glass, it was those, because we was, we was just uh, like, uh, the wall was behind us. Just to look what happened there, and we see this thing was coming to us it's fast. It was very fast, very fast. Is that the sound that one I can hear? Puff! Everyone was down. And we start calling each other, and we start praying. We was praying, 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 praying. God is great. We didn't cease to, to shout the name of Jesus down there. Hello, Emmanuel. Uh, you speaking to Charles uh, Longwane from uh, uh, Jobek, Johannesburg. Uh, on Friday, we were in the church, and in lunchtime, we got out, and then we were moving to the, the uh, where they gi they're giving us food. Uh, while we were going, and then next to the building that uh, was fallen, I've seen the aeroplane was coming to the building, but I was with my friend, he was just taking photos for the synagogue building. That flight when it comes, I didn't think that it will come to the building because it was coming as like it's going to pass the building. But suddenly when we see it on the photo, it was turning to the building. It was big. It was big, but this, the, it was not having sound too much. The sound was not too much because if it was too much, I think everybody was going to look up. It was a silence one when it was just moving and it was moving very slowly. Uh, it looks like a jetter. It looks like a jetter. It doesn't look like an ordinary plane that we take when you go somewhere or anything. After that, then we pass the building. We're going where we're going to eat. And then my friend was still taking those uh, photos. Um, that is what I've seen from there. Then it, that was it. What I'd like to confirm is what people they saw on the Emmanuel TV, the clip the Man of God showed. Some they say, no, it looks like a bed, it's not an aircraft. But I'd like to confirm it that that one, it was an aircraft. We saw it, we witnessed it, and we thank God because on one of the pictures taken, the, uh, the aircraft was captured. I'd like to believe that it was a plan of God that pushed that excitement to like to take those pictures. It was the Holy Spirit. Thank you very much. Security footage. September 12, 2014. A strange aircraft flies low over a building at the Synagogue Church of All Nations multiple times before the incident. And after the incident, the strange aircraft does not return. September 12, 2014. Take note of the upper left-hand corner of the screen. A strange aircraft flies over the building at the Synagogue Church of All Nations before the incident at 11.30 a.m. Thirteen minutes later, the strange aircraft flies low over the building before the incident, 11.43 a.m. Just two minutes later, the strange aircraft returns and flies lower over the building before the incident, 11.45 a.m. Nine minutes later, the strange aircraft returns and again flies low over the building before the incident, 11.54 a.m.
This is the moment of the incident. You are about to watch the CCTV footage of the September 12 incident at the Synagogue Church of All Nations from cameras at different angles of how it took place. This is what the building looked like before the September 12 incident occurred. Now, watch the CCTV footage from a different angle, showing a closer view of the building from the second camera. Footage from another CCTV camera, positioned facing the end of the building, reveals the incident from another, closer angle. Take note of the building in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. From this angle, you can see clearly the precise moment of the incident. Take note of the top of the screen as the CCTV footage, played in slow motion, reveals exactly what happened to the building, frame by frame, during the incident. Look again to what happens to the building during the exact moments of the incident as the CCTV camera continues to reveal in slow motion each moment of the incident. This is the moment of the incident. Can you see? The whole thing became powder and rubble. No single appliance was brought out when the building went down. No single appliance was brought out when the building went down. Okay, thank you, thank you. Let me continue my message. After the fourth time, we could not see the aircraft again. Let me read a little message for you before I bring out some detail. This environment, Ekotunegbe, we have never witnessed an accident of a building collapse. This is to tell you that we have a stable terrain in this Ekotunegbe. I've been in this community for the past 30 years. No record of building collapse. As a minister of the gospel, our first priority is life saving. There is no compromise in what we do at all. I'm going to leave this for you to judge. Take note of that. I'm pregnant of the word. We have left the security to do their job. Let us believe, take note of that, and educate our people and be alert. Why we should believe? So that our country will not witness similar incident in another place. This is not the first time. If we believe, we will educate our people and be alert. No matter how long a lie is sustained, truth will someday prevail. We should remember the militant that came with his group to this church with bomb, and he was arrested, and it was televised. Upon televise it and show it on the screen, all groups were saying it was lying. But later, they discovered that it was true because they felt their presence somewhere. And the case of the militant is still with the security hand. And the whole pressman 
news all over the world. The whole story first, first, first. Let us listen to what this man has to say. My name is Mustafa Umar. I'm from Adama State, Yola. And I'm a Boko Haram member. And that Boko Haram member is a court. And that court, I know why I joined the court. So from that place, many, many souls who kill from Adama to Mediguri side, Munchika, from Munchika to town of Gata. Okay. What brought you here? This is my first time to come to Lagos. And you came to where? And we come to this uh, synagogue church. We drop at this uh, junction here. Junction opposite church here. Opposite the church there. Okay. When you stop there, what for? So we we'll stop there. The moral we we'll use will we'll come to that church. We we'll come to this uh, junction here. Opposite the junction there, one house someone used to sell something. What is he selling? He sell all these sweets, soap, cigarettes, many all these provisions. Okay. When you met the man, what else? So when we met the man, so we, we, we are five in number, so I hold the bag, the bag will hold, the instruments will come with it. I meet the Malam, I say, Malam, please help me just keep this bag. You met the man, and you asked him to keep the bag. The bag and with the, him. The bag contains what? It contains some instruments inside, sir. What is the instrument? The instrument, all those instruments say to destroy, to kill, it's a bomb. Bomb, okay. I give him the bag, say, I, I let, keep this bag for me, say no. He don't keep anything here for okay. anybody. Okay. Because I speak my language in Hausa language, so that because I'm the only person I see that is my brother here. That is why. Okay. So he don't he refuse to collect the bag. Okay. So we decide to carry the bag and go with it. I said, let's sit down here and eat. Okay. So after we eat, that is where we think to do prepare our mission here now. So we sit down there, we eating food. Then bring food for us. We are eating. So they are eating. So the woman has television in her shop. We are watching the television. We are watching the television discuss between us. You are watching what? So we just, that is Emmanuel television. Uh, I saw you particularly, you are preaching to people that time. Okay. So I, as you are preaching to people now, we are just sitting down eating. By the time you pray and you lay a hand, something like this to your hand, it just be like you are doing with us. You just lay your hand to, to our face. As you just, at once you just lay your hand like this. And that, that hand you lay, and you lay it for, for our face, direct. So that is where the, 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 all our plans, everybody, just confusion, just come between us. Assume you people were not there when the prayer was going on. What was the plan? Our plan is to take the souls at this junction here, in this Nago church here. That is where we will enter. That is so where I tell us. that us. bomb inside the bar. Okay, how would you people do them? It just be like something like meter. So there is wire that will draw and mix, join it. And as the button will press, we can set it one hour, we can set it to explode at one minute. So we can set it to explode at three minutes. So, so, so you, you that, uh -huh. if, we come, if we set it at five minutes, if we drop it, before that five minutes, we will leave that place. You people will leave the place? We will leave the place. What will happen? All the souls around there, everybody will go. What is your problem? Why are you here? Why I'm here? Since that day, I want to, I want to go back home. I don't fit to go back home again. Why? Anytime I lie down, I will be seeing you. So the thing is disturbing me too much. It's disturbing me. So what, is, what is disturbing you? You are disturbing me now. I don't know what I did to you now. Where is your colleague, the other people? Everybody scatter now. Everybody scatter. Why are you alone? Why me alone? I don't know why I just stand alone. Because this thing is bothering me too much. This is my first time to come to Lagos. So other people will still be in Lagos? I don't know where we are now. The All day on the phone, nobody agreed to pick his call again. Okay, Every what are the bag the, with bomb? Our master, the name is Balare Benasuru. He take it back. Okay, how do you come about this thing? What gives you the courage to do this? How do you manage to have the heart to do what you are doing? Simple. And I use Arabic language to write it. After I write it, then wash it, then give me as a drink. That is the day you I drink get it. it. I drink it. That is the day I get the liver. After I drink it, I have the soul. I have the mind to kill the souls. Okay, why do you want to see me? Why can't you run away? Now, everybody run away, but you. Why are you coming here to say this kind of thing? Why? What is worrying you? Tell us. Why am I coming to this place? 
I want to go. I don't have the spirit to go again. Because you don't have the spirit to do it again. I don't have the spirit to do it again. Anytime I just lie down. That's why I don't want to sleep for night. I'll always be seeing you. You don't, you don't hand. sleep in the night. I don't want to sleep. I see you be disturbing me, telling me I should don't go to you. I'll be praying for me. You lay your hand on me. That's why. Since he could not sleep and he could not rest and he has no peace. He say he want to die if I don't release him. I don't know why he should say that. Why other people have run away and, and I know anywhere they are to, they are under bondage. Serious torture. Wish this man could not be at age. And he say he will not run away, he want to get free. I want to tell you that for the past two weeks now, I've been wearing these jeans. Can you see? This is two weeks now. I wore it last week. I wore it yesterday. The same jeans I'm wearing now. You should know that something is going on. I'm in a serious battle for the past two weeks. Those who look at me yesterday would know that this is what I wore. Last, this is what I wore to. The same. I would have wear the same shirt yesterday, but because there is no way I could put it together, people will see the same thing, the same service yesterday is today. It's not possible for me to stand in your midst and begin to tell you what I have seen in the spirit about to happen. But I have seen it for the past three weeks. But I have also set a trap. All the look on corner of the church. That anywhere the trap should cash. Not even we don't want them to enter here. Because entering here will create fear. But not just at the mayor discussion concerning the issue, the trap for the past three weeks. But I will not stand here to tell you, but I can be telling you the prophecy about the other nature. But concern me, I know. <laughs> what will you do for me now? What will you do? You have been praying for me already. If I now stand up and say this, what is going to happen? I don't know what the way you look at it. So I keep it to myself. Just give the strength. Here is a brother here. I want him to be released because the heart want to cut. He could not help himself. That's not the direction to follow. So, he cannot close eye, he cannot sit down, he cannot do anything. So, my mission is to separate him from the spirit that is controlling him to do that. We are not to fight mere flesh and blood. We are to be armed for battle. The thought of evil against the anointed man of God is a crime. And it's abomination to God. If you are a true man of God, that thought, just sitting down somewhere, anywhere you are, you are thinking of what can we do? How do we get him? How do we destroy him? How do we fool him? How do we disgrace him? It's God you are talking about. Touch not my anointed and do him no wrong. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. en este momento la liberación de este hombre miembro es miembro del equipo terrorista Who are you? Who I am? Yes. <coughs> Can you face me? Yeah. Se ve esta batalla espiritual. Bobby Tower! Bobby Tower! Bobby Tower! 
In the name of Jesus. Uh, Why it out? Whatever they must have given you uh, that will inspire you to kill people. Why it out? Out! Permite este momento esta sustancia, ordenada por el profeta Trillojo, esa sustancia que lo ha incitado a matar personas. Why it out? Recuerde, este es un miembro del equipo de terroristas de Boca Haram. Jay! On the floor! He's looking at the person that he's talking. On the floor! Out! <coughs> Imagine they carry that bomb inside this place. Okay, set up! Run! 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 Recuerde que es miembro del grupo terrorista. Se ve la pantalla, en el brazo. Have you attempted any operation before and it failed? I never failed before. There is the operation we go in Air Force Base in Meduguri. Air Force Base in Meduguri? Yes, almost. You, you are one of them? Yes. Even we go to uh, Adamawa State in Munchika. Last two weeks passed now. And you never attempt anything and fail before? We never failed. How many this one fail? Why this one fail us now as we come to this Snago church now? Why we fail this? It's what, the problem is when we go to eat. And since we are going to any job like this, we didn't think to go and eat because we've already satisfied ourselves before we come out. But we don't know what pushed us. We say, let's enter inside this shop to go and eat. After we, are, we sit down there eating because we are five in number, we face the television. When you lay your hand in television, you just open your hands like this. You just on your our face. That is where the confession just come. Everybody just finding way. Okay, place your hand on your chest. en la pantalla este hombre del grupo terrorista de Boko Haram confesando cómo él realiza los ataques terroristas, las bombas para asesinar gente masiva diciendo que nunca ha fracasado en sus intentos que no explica cómo él fracasó este intento aquí en la Sino Iglesia de todas las naciones la de la a través de la oración por parte del profeta Tibillosha il a entendu la confession de cet homme qui dit qu'il était dans une la secte de Boko Haram, qu'il avait déposé une bombe au sein de l'église. Il a mentionné comment elle a été initiée dans cette secte et qu'ils ont écrit quelque chose en langue arabe. Ils l'ont lavé, ils l'ont fait boire et c'est comme cela qu'il a eu le cœur de pouvoir tuer quiconque. Donc, so, l'esprit qui a l'aidé à tuer est mort. How are you feeling now? How are you feeling? Father God. Yeah? Thank you. Oh, he's crying. Thank you. He's crying. He said thank you. He feels different. He said gracias. Llorando. 
is now a very person himself used to know. If you give him something, he can't slap people now. Again. Talk less of killing people. So he has been delivered. He has a lot to say. Because so far, so the, a, a lot has gone. He's going to cheat out everything that they have eaten. Because everything is neutralized now. But they say, one, this you used to wear. Yes. I'm used to wear it because... That time the thing even tights me. But how do you know that I'm wearing something? Because he said, "What?" He said, "How did the man of God know that he used to wear something on his waist?" <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. I'm very sorry, viewers all over the world, and uh, I know you want me to ask a lot of questions and whatever. He has said it all. The operation he has gone. He said this is the first time he is failing. So whatever you want to hear, that is not my nature. My nature, I love people. I, don't, I'm not, I can't fight mere blood and flesh, but the spirit being that caused this. My duty is to deliver him. Thank you. So if you are, if you are thinking of repercussion, what will have happened if 200 people just die in the name of the ministry? If you are thinking about that, you should also think about Christ on the cross for you. I know you asked me, why synagogue? That is a question that is going through you. Why this church? Yes, don't forget the spiritual blessing that God has betrayed on us. A big head wears a large heart. Don't quickly forget about Ebola issue too. It was God that rescued this ministry from the issue. They want to put each of Ebola. If possible, they will have dodged an Ebola patient and drop it inside the church. You remember the test message you received that Ebola is in the church? Don't go there. Cook hot water, put salt. Say TB Joshua. You have forgotten? Don't forget. God rescued this ministry from that. They were trying to scare you from coming to this church. I know my hour has not yet come. I have not yet finished my job. I have not finished my job. I have not finished my job. Anything close to Jesus receives attack. Don't forget the message you have been receiving for the past two weeks. I was talking to you in parable. Go over the message. You will see the picture. That when a situation like this comes, you should know how to handle it. It has come and God is on top of the matter. Let me remind you what I said during the last Sunday that what will be happening between now will be much, much greater than 10 years. How many of you were in the service? I want to assure you that our God will get back to them. Yeah. Listen to me. God will get back to them, the agent of Satan, and you will know when he get back to them. Yeah. You will know, ah, because of what happened. Look at what happened. You will know. And I'm happy the whole thing start here. I will tell you the reason why I say the whole thing start here. From the beginning, it has been a battle. If you notice, I have been talking to you for the past two weeks now in parable. I want to show you some document here. This document, I think my wife is just seeing it now for the first time. Only those who receive it from the email department 
and I. And those who receive those documents, I want them between me and you and God. Nobody should see this document. But because of what has happened, I think, let me just show you one. Just one. I want somebody to come out and read this uh, document. With the patient. Man of God, my name is Emmanuel Anaja. I'm from Kogi State, living in Jos, right now with my parents, who is a soldier. I have a confession to make. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ as Savior. I'm a Boko Haram member. I came to Squan to plant a bulb in the Synagogue Church of All Nation, but I could not do it because of God who called you. I went back to Jaws with a bomb, which I still have with me. Now I want to show the whole world the God you serve. Man of God, Senior Prophet T.B. Joshua, please talk to God for me. For the Bible say, confess your sin to one another. So this is the picture of the man. For security reason, I think uh, I will not give you one another. This is one out of thousands. The reason why I'm showing you this, because for you to know the God you are serving, God wants to reveal to you what he has been doing you don't know. Probably we may not appreciate what he has been doing. And I know if I have shown you this, those who are faithless may not come here again. If I have shown it in the past, faithless generation may not want to come. It's not one, it's not two, it's not three. I've picked and I report them to the securities. You know what it means for the church whom you have read so much? To show something on the screen, it must have confirmed it's true. Because you know it's not normal to show something that is not true on the screen. I show it for a good two months, still yet they say it was not true. Not until you saw they are present somewhere. What happened, we should believe it so that we can educate our people to be alert. If not, I said it last time, because I'm Boko Haram, what you are seeing now is not going to stop here, but our God will get back. Maybe this will be the end of the whole thing. And I want to salute the martyrs of people that are so faithful to God. The God generous people that know the God they are serving. I want to salute them. Thank you. All over the world, I want to say, well, the story we read for the past three days, you know, I remain silent. I have to, because I know my life has been like that. Right from the beginning of my life, people will lie, but they will still come back to the truth. My life has been like that. And that is a good life. For people to lie against you first, before they realize the truth. If people realize the truth at the beginning, the story may not be wonderful. Because there's story all over. Here I am, I leave you for you to judge. I'm a prophet. Security, they have a job to do. Thank you very much. Let's watch the difference between what happens when a building collapses because of controlled demolition and when a building collapses because of structural failure. We will leave you to judge for yourself.
What you are about to watch are controlled demolitions in the nation of Nigeria. This is the controlled demolition of the old Nitel building in Abuja, Nigeria, July 27, 2013. This is the building at the Synagogue Church of All Nations in Lagos, Nigeria, September 12, 2014. This is the controlled demolition of the Bank of Industry building in Lagos, Nigeria, September 21, 2008. controlled demolitions in the nation of Nigeria. On July 27, 2014, Six weeks before the incident at the Skoan on September 12, 2014, Prophet T.B. Joshua gave a word of prophecy about a cloud covering Nigeria, as close as my mouth. Let's listen to him. I came back from Colombia. I wanted to travel from there to another country, but I came back home because there is a cloud that covered Nigeria. I want to witness how this cloud would despair. Cloud may trouble. Look at what is happening here. You will not see it on national TV, but if you learn that they bomb there now, one of you will call CNN that they are bomb synagogue. A rescue agency spokesman in Nigeria says Friday's collapse at a church complex in Lagos killed at least 42 people. As many as 130 others may have been pulled from the rubble of the synagogue Church of All Nations. Look at what is happening here. You will not see it on national TV, but if you learn that they bombed there now, one of you will call CNN that they are bomb synagogue. Oh, what is happening? You will never see it on the pages of national newspaper. International, you will never see it. Every good thing. But if anything bad happens in front of the church, one of you, Nigeria, will be the one to make a call. You are destroying your country, selling your country at nothing. It's a very painful thing. You are the one destroying your country, you, Nigerians. The image you are given to your country is bad. You destroy your image, you tell your nation it's bad, everything is bad, it's good, it's bad. And I'm telling you something far, 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 but now I'm telling you something as close as my mouth. One thing is clear, I have never seen where lie overcome truth. Take note of that. I have never seen where lie overcome what? Truth. Mm. Truth will always what? Prevail. Prevail. I pray, Father, 
Let your will be done. Ta volonté soit faite. Let your will be done. Que ta volonté soit faite. Let your will be done. Que ta volonté soit faite, Seigneur. In Jesus' name. Au nom de Jésus. Let's listen to some structural and civil engineers from international bodies who inspected the foundations of the Skoan building in the aftermath of the incident and gave their professional views. I'm Dr. Stephen Asherin Toga. I am a civil engineer. I am a structural engineer. I am a, a, a materials engineer. I've lectured in many universities and even now I'm still a lecturer. I happen to be also a dean of the Faculty of Engineering in Tanzania. I come from Tanzania. And the subjects that I teach are exactly on these structures. I studied uh, in Europe, I taught in Europe, then I came here, the year 2005. I also know the regulations of constructions, what really happens in a country like Nigeria, even Tanzania, they use the so-called British standards in, let us say, concrete structures. Okay. Now, I also know that if officially a recognized company takes a, a job like this, it has to be up to the standard. And I also know the British, let us say, codes. I can talk a lot about this. What happened in this uh, building, as I can see, the interaction between the, this uh, uh, foundation base, you see, and the soil has opened up so wide that even if the, let us say, the soil was having, uh, was of low strength, you see, then actually it will still have uh, an excellent response. In other words, the soil will just uh, have just like a touch, meaning that no actually suppression of uh, let us say the foundation. And this is why, as you can see, the foundation itself here, as you can see, it is healthy. This type of steel is the, the type of steel that is of highest strength in the world. I studied in a European continental program type of education from Aristotle University of Thessaloniki. You see, so I know this type of steel is the best steel that you can ever have. You see, and as one of my colleagues said here that these columns are you see, more than, you, you, you know, six. And even the cross-section, this cross-section of this steel is just uh, too much, you see. M and also, uh, if you observe this one here, okay, from the foundation to this height, it means there is the interconnection between the foundation and into the upper continuation of the column joining the structure with the, the beams that are up there you see meaning that there was even more you see reinforcements than just these ones you are seeing you see then this kind of uh, material that is used for uh, what we call it star ups or rings rings that tie this they use this is a 10 y10 y10 means what it is actually 10 millimeters standardly we use six this is 10 and i'm talking here because i'm a university lecturer and i prepare groom engineers that are i mean i i i, I want to get their degrees I've even also done a lot of research, supervised people who are, who are doing, let us say, masters and doctorates. So I know what I'm saying. Come to this material, this here, this, this beam here. You see, it's a beam interconnecting that foundation and the, the other one. An extra effort made by 
the company that built it. You see, normally this kind of thing is, can be put in a super sensitive foundation in terms of a, an area or a zone that has got a high, you see, level of uh, earthquake effects. As I can also see the materials used in terms of, uh, let us say, let us say aggregates. These are called aggregates, you see. And the, the different sizes that are used precisely because of uh, this kind of uh, diversification of the aggregates, then it simply means this, that actually the interwovening of uh, the, this material concrete as a brittle material is well interwoven together with the let us say from the aggregates that are big then come to the smaller aggregate sizes of the aggregates then come to the uh, to the sand itself then come to the cement itself which is a paste that interwove woves the 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 concrete itself as i am seeing here the way it is compacted it means that it is super perfects the extent of the degree of effectiveness in the excellence of construction of this building. How, how high do you think this building, looking at the foundation, could go? Uh, with this kind of foundation, it could go to even more than 12 stories. I have seen the building in the, in, in, you know, as it was being shown. And uh, I saw the height of, uh, let us say, between one floor and the other one. Actually, the higher the height that is of, uh, between the floor and the floor, the more uh, resistance to destruction the structure is. And this structure, this building, had that quality. You see, this happening could only have been done and done pre-planned, you see, uh, arrangement of, uh, I can say, knowledge people like he, me. Why? Because we as engineers, in civil engineers, in, uh, civil engineering, we are even taught how to demolish, let us say, buildings. Therefore, there are methodologies that are taught officially, and we teach, actually, how to do that, this job. You see, one of the character of, uh, I mean, uh, of the thing that is uh, uh, within that uh, kind of uh, knowledge is whenever you are doing this, you must make sure that, you see, the building just has to fall within its plot. In other words, within its own foundation. It's like it, it is like making the building to kneel down, just like that. Okay. And very quickly, you see, very quickly, very quickly. Why? Because you actually strike, you know, art artificially at where, you see, this material here is brittle. Brittle, it means it's not ductile. Now, Brito means that actually it doesn't have this strength, the tensile strength, in this manner. In this manner, okay? To elongate it. If you get a chalk and you tension it, it will just go. You see? So actually, when it, it will just crack very suddenly without extending. You see? Now, we do know that you start with the, this uh, type of uh, this material. You see, you weaken it very quickly. Then, when you in the process as you weaken it very quickly, you see, then the whole building will rest on, 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 a, on only one thing. That is the steel. Yet the design considers the interworking together of the two materials, concrete and the steel, as one. You see. This is actually the, the, the thing. Now, when you take away one material, then you see accumulate everything on this, then this is where you see these ones, they had to, 
to, to, to like a sink, you see, because they are alone. Then immediately the building has just to kneel down, you know, and very quickly. And the, 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 process, the process that we use is that once you detonate somewhere, then it goes pa -pa 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 -pa. And then in seconds, I can say even more. So not to exhaust you, you see, this is actually what I have to say. Thank you. If you can see the size of the rod, I mean the iron, this size is Y20. And where is the ring that gather the, the iron together? It's Y10. And you see that the base is still remain the same. Without it to one side or other side. My name is Alfius Mamafa. I'm from South Africa. Uh, I did civil engineering. I specialize in buildings. And most of the buildings have been constructed by Y12. And these are the Y20, the strongest. And if you can check the, ty the type of reinforcement, the reinforcement on it, uh, mostly we get one, two, three, four, five, six on a column. And this is more than six. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, around about 10 for reinforcement. And the strongest reinforcement that we ever get in the buildings. This is the strongest column that we will ever get. Nothing will shake this. Yes, as you can see, this reinforcement, you can't shake them, it's especially with the concrete inside. Concrete makes it more strong because concrete on itself is so strong. What about with this reinforcement? This, you can't shake it anymore. And if you can see here, this reinforcement, it has been it has been for reinforcement on the on the ground here. There is there is a concrete reinforcement here, and the concrete reinforcement here it's so strong this beam. And the other thing, the structural failure will always happen on a foundation. That's why there's no any other building that will be constructed without inspectors checking on your foundation. A crack on a foundation it's a structural failure. So, because of the weight that is coming from above, here you find no crack on anything. It's so strong. That's why, the, so here, I don't see any structural failure on this building. Okay, my name is Tabo Pieha from South Africa. Um, I'm qualified as a civil engineering technician and a candidate as an um, engineering technician with the uh, EXA. Um, from my observation, what I've uh, noticed or what I've seen uh, from this, um, from the exposed foundations, um, uh, basically when when the structure is failing, you will also notice from the foundations that the structure is failing. So uh, by merely looking at the the bases that are exposed from the entire building, you can see that the bases are still firm; they are standing. On the columns, you can see the amount of reinforcement that has been used here. And um, the the concrete, well, the concrete also can be tested, but from seeing the columns and the, some bases that are lying around the site, it shows you that uh, most of them uh, they fell and they were still intact uh, up, up until after the the collapse of the building. So, according to my own observation, I believe that um, uh, the, the the structure has been affected in a different way other than the structural failure. Thank you. Let's now hear from one of the international news journalists who flew in to cover the aftermath of the event. Take your time to watch the rest on the internet. AM. A military aircraft flies at low altitude over the church precinct. 11.43, another aircraft along a similar flight path. 11.45, it happens again. 11.54, the plane circles for a fourth time at low altitude. Forty-four, the building collapses. The 
this is the Synagogue Church of All Nations. It's a Sunday morning, it's packed full of people, and surrounded by the synagogue is a number of hostels, a number of accommodation facilities for people who come to the church. It is literally 20 meters away from where the building collapsed on the 12th of September back in 2014. The building precinct is heavily guarded 24 hours a day. Apart from some of the initial rubble being removed, the site has not been touched since the incident happened. There are two very opposing theories on what happened on the 12th of September 2014. Here we are outside uh, the Synagogue Church of All Nations. It is a Sunday morning here, so a busy, busy time here uh, on the streets of Lagos. And uh, we're standing literally uh, at uh, the uh, scene uh, where almost exactly a year ago, uh, the, this building, the guest house outside the Synagogue Church of All Nations, 118 people lost their lives and also uh, including 85 South Africans. So uh, we're here now and we wanted to just talk uh, uh, to one of the guys who uh, set up or wrote a paper uh, talking about um, the reasoning, the possible reasoning behind what happened that day, uh, that uh, infamous day, uh, Paul Iganiwe is uh, stating, uh, standing with me now and he, he published a journal uh, talking about uh, the concept of uh, infrasonic weapons. And so he's going to maybe take me through the site, he's studied the site closely uh, in the days literally and weeks uh, after the incident and he's going to run me through uh, uh, what his sides are and, uh, and the basis of his paper uh, that uh, he wrote uh, telling us a little bit about it. Paul, uh, welcome to ANN7, thanks very much obviously for joining us. Uh, just run us through what your sort of basic findings were uh, when you first came to the scene. I haven't gone to, uh, studied the CCTV. I discovered that uh, the plane kept flying over where we are standing now, the building was here, and it flew for four different times. And uh, from the analysis of the video, I discovered that after the fourth time the plane flew over, 30 minutes later the building came down, about approximately 30 minutes it came down. Now the interesting thing is that why would the plane keep flying over the building in a manner that seems consistent of trying to induce or trying to fire a kind of infrasonic weapon, which of course is what I published and it was accepted to, to be so. Now having gone through that, I came to that conclusion that that plane carried an infrasonic generator, which consistently fired pulses of the infrasound over the building and it needed to give a complete or enough intensity of the doses. That's why it kept coming back. And interestingly, immediately after the building came down, the plane never came back again. So let's assume that the plane was just on routine flying over. Now the building has come down. Why is the plane not continuing? Local structural engineers, independent to the church, have studied the site and gave us their conclusions. Anybody that watched the footage, you will see the, bu the building come down as if a slice of bread. You know, when you arrange a slice of bread, how did that bread come down? The, 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 a building of six story come down. Will that teach to left or teach to right? And be any such failure. Number one, you have to know the, the point of the load that maybe the weight of the building go to that side. But this area, everything come down within a seconds. And so sure, anybody that come here see glaring that the core room is intact, nothing touching it. And the other side, we see some chaos there. It's intact. We removed that one because of the rescue time. The theory of infrasonic weapons, I just briefly want to know what your uh, thought is uh, on infrasonic weapons and the damage that it can cause uh, to a building such as this? Yes, there is really where some science things they are saying if if they, 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 they if they plan there's something inside the building you will see the chemical reaction on the outside. But in this, in this case we don't see any chemical reaction but we are seeing, seeing that when the, the plane fly over four times because the building didn't have any signs of crest, it didn't have any signs of cracking, it's, the building stands firm. 
nothing like slash racking whatever or in the building. But after the plane flying over four times, within before 30 minutes, the plane come down and the plane you don't come back again. <laughs> The focus for the church is the government planes that flew over the building on the morning of the incident. The response from the government was that routine Nigerian Air Force training coincidentally took place that morning. Are you saying then that Nigeria, somebody in Nigeria, possesses infrasonic weapons that could have brought this building down? I wouldn't know if it is somebody in Nigeria or somebody outside Nigeria. This is weapons of international dimensions. It could have been that it was brought from outside the country, perhaps to test, you know. People do a lot of weapons testing and sometimes people are not even aware. I'll give you an example. Some years back, I've forgotten the exact dates now. The Americans were testing this same kind of weapon, another generic sonic weapons, in one of the islands. And you know what? All the dolphins in the in the ocean were dying and washing off ashore and truly speaking that's that's not my business it's the business of the government and the security agencies to ensure properly what happened here because mine is to show that this is what happened and i think that i have done that with people who have never met me and who are better experts in in this field as you say you're a scientist looking at how buildings get demolished controlled demolitions this looks almost exactly the same um, can you categorically say that there were no explosives found in this building and that it, it must have been done from the air? Yeah, there are, there are certain misconceptions that we need to educate non-scientists when we talk about controlled demolition. Controlled demolition means that it is controlled by humans. And you see, in using explosives for controlled demolition, you want to achieve an aim. The aim is to transfer the energy of the explosives into the building to bring down the building. Now what happened here is similar in the sense that infrasonic energy was transferred into the building. It's just that the methods differ. In the, in the traditional case you place in explosives, that cannot be done clandestinely. And if that was the case, there would have been chemical signatures that we would have seen. Like I said, the tent 